Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. On today's show, the Yankees made a historic hire in their minor league system. And we have a guest to talk to us about it because it is. It's it's historic. It's amazing. I'm very excited about it. And we got the news that Michael Kay and David Cohn will be Sunday Night Baseball colleagues with Alex Rodriguez. And... I have some suggestions for who should join the Yes Booth. Coming up on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees. There we go. There you can see my name on YouTube. If you're listening to me, you won't see my name. But if you're watching me on YouTube, here I am. It's, you can see it on my face if you're watching. I'm very excited about this. I had Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects on to talk about the historic hiring of Rachel Balkovec. This is so great. The Yankees actually did something historic and progressive. I can't believe it. You could knock me over with a feather right now. This is just the best news. And in case you didn't know, the Yankees hired a woman to manage the Tampa Tarpons. Yes, I'm pausing for effect. This is the best. And we will discuss why it shouldn't matter that she's a woman because she's perfectly qualified to do that job. Before we get into everything and before I bring Lindsay on, you can listen to Locked On Yankees on Apple, Google, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher. You can watch us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We are inching closer and closer to a thousand. And when that happens, good things will happen. So subscribe if you can. And if you have a smart device, you can tell it to play podcast Locked On Yankees. So Lindsay Crosby joined me to talk about Rachel Balkovec's resume and the importance of her becoming a manager in the minor leagues and what she brings to the table. So without further ado, let's bring Lindsay on. You will see a video of the two of us that we filmed early this morning. I'm recording this later in the day. So you'll see that I look a little different, but here we go. So as I said in the open, I am joined by a guest. And if you're on YouTube, you can see him right next to me, Lindsey Crosby of Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsey, thank you for joining the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Stacey. I'm excited to be here. So we're going to talk about Rachel Balkovec because this is, I am just so over the moon with this news. Nothing could thrill me more because as a person who is femme and who was raised as a girl, I consider myself non-binary right now, but um, having a woman manager on any level in the Yankee organization is just the coolest thing to me. And I actually can't believe it happened. And this is just great. So we have Lindsay on because he knows a lot about Rachel and the prospects she'll be working with. And we're going to discuss that. So um, I just wanted to do this for all of my listeners who may not be up on the minor leagues, because there are some of you out there that aren't as up on the minor leagues as some other people. So I wanted to do this for you. So Lindsay, what can you tell everyone about Rachel's career path? Okay. So Rachel was a collegiate catcher. She caught at Creighton, got her degree in exercise science, uh, transferred as a grad transfer to the University of New Mexico, got another degree, master's in kinesiology. Uh, so baseball background. And then from there, she's had a lot of jobs in baseball. She's spent about 10 years in baseball so far. Uh, she started off as the interim strength and conditioning coach with the St. Louis Cardinals in, in 2012 in Johnson City. Um, first time we'd ever seen a woman hired as a strength and conditioning coach. And she actually won the Appalachian League Award for Strength Coach of the Year, her very first year in the job. So 2014, she gets that job full time, has that job for two years. Uh, the Cardinals have seen a lot of success come out of Johnson City, and they directly credited her with that. Uh, from from there, she joins the Astros. She becomes their Latin American strength and conditioning coach. And so I love what she did here because she gets that job. She's excited about that job. So she goes out and learns fluent Spanish. And, and something that a lot of players that I've talked to, a lot of prospects that I've talked to 
especially the Latin American guys, when they first get to the States from Latin America, uh, they really struggle to transition. And they've always talked about, the ones who have been successful have always talked about there was that person in the organization who, one, spoke their language and was the bridge between the Latin American players and the American culture. Sometimes that's a player. Sometimes that's a coach. Sometimes that's uh, a translator for somebody. But it's usually when guys are successful making that transition, it's because they've had that support network. And she really was that for the Astros. She spent two years down in Latin America with those guys speaking fluent Spanish. Then they moved her to Double A Corpus Christi as a strength and conditioning coach there. And it's it's she's done a you know she did she did a lot of great work with them. First woman to hold that position as well. And just about every job she went to, she was the first woman to hold that position in baseball. And then she did something interesting. 2018, she left and went to the Netherlands to get a master's degree, a second master's degree in human movement sciences. And when she came back from that, the Yankees hired her to be a hitting coach for spring training in 2020. And obviously, we know what happened in 2020. We're familiar with all of that. So she ended up going to Australia, coached in Australia for the pandemic, uh, did some stuff, including in, including their their all-star game, spent some time there, and then now she is the, the low-A manager uh, of the Tampa Tarpons. And the reason that I love this hire so much is because what she's going to do for some of those toolsy guys down there who have lost some time because of the missing 2020 season. I'm thinking about Jason Dominguez specifically the center fielder um he hasn't had a whole lot of professional baseball experience but he spent time with her they've bonded and i feel like she's really going to do a great job at transitioning him into um the majors you know getting him where he needs to go simply because she has that relationship she's exceptionally well qualified for a single a manager um and then she speaks the language and that is one of those big things that we can't really measure the impact of that bridge person, but we've heard from so many prospects about that was what was key to them to successfully make it through the minor leagues and make it to the major league level. Right. Yeah. I can't even imagine being someone coming from a foreign country, not knowing the language and feeling alone in a sense. I remember Mar Mariano Rivera struggled with that a lot when he first came over. And it is great that there are coaches and managers out there who are learning the language to help them communicate with these guys. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, Dominguez is young. He's still really young and it's good for him to have someone like Rachel to help him out. Um, is there anyone else you can think of that she may be able to help down there? So, I mean, a lot of that, that single a roster are guys that she's worked with a bit already. Uh, so I mean, there's not really a person that she's not going to help, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking specifically, um, in the past, the Yankees have struggled a bit, I feel like, developing some of those Latin American players. And so that's where I really see her as being having an advantage over some other hire. And honestly, we've done all of this. I haven't even mentioned the fact that she's a woman. I just I, she's an exceptionally well-qualified manager, despite the fact, you know, I mean, like it's it's irregardless of her of her gender. Right. She's just an exceptionally well-qualified manager. And and I'm very excited to see what she does at single A. And I'm very excited that my six-year-old daughter was like, hey, can I coach baseball? I'm like, yes, baby, you can. Yeah. She's doing it. Yeah. So just, just being able to set that example, um, I applaud the Yankees for going out there and getting her and, and for keeping her. The Giants tried to hire her away, and she interviewed with them, and she stayed with the Yankees. And I think that shows that she's one of the rising stars in the system, in the organization. Yeah. Maybe she'll replace Aaron Boone at some point. I have seen a few people already ask for that. I mean, <laughs> it's it's something I can see within the next five years, her being involved with the major league team at some level. Right. Um, probably given, given her background, I would say a hitting coach and then working with the catchers directly. I, you know, like I said, she did catch in college. Uh, she was a pretty well accomplished softball catcher. So I can see her being involved in both of those areas as you come up and as she gets to the major league level. Yeah. Rising star. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all, everything about it is so cool. And as you said, she's so qualified that if you looked at her resume and didn't know that she was a woman, you'd be like, well, yeah, of course you would hire this person to be the manager of 
the Tampa Tarpons. Why not? Because they have such an extensive background. And I was looking on um, her Instagram and seeing some of her pictures and she's amazing. The strength mm -hmm. training stuff, you know, I'm, I'm getting back into working out. I don't want to look like that, but I couldn't look like that. I don't have the discipline <laughs> to look like that, but just, you know, you know, when you see other people who are doing exercise like that and you see their arms and you think, wow, that's, that's nice. Yeah. That would be great to have, but yeah, <laughs> I I'm would, just, you know, jazzed. This is great. <laughs> I would be suspicious of a strength and conditioning coach that, did? that didn't, didn't, that, that didn't look strong. Right. It's kind of like uh, getting food from a chef who's incredibly skinny. You're like, wait a second, yeah. this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same thing there. And going back to your question of guys that I think she can help. And I just kind of said everybody, but now that I think more about it, Austin Wells mm. is someone who I think she's going to make a great impact on the knock on him that I've seen uh, comes defensively. It feels like he has below average arm strength and specifically he struggles to throw out base runners. Uh, and that was something that she did rather well. And when you watch tape of him, it looks like he has a lot of wasted movement and excess just in his motion, it, it's not as streamlined as it could be. And that's a technique thing, but obviously not only having been a catcher, but having studied exercise science and kinesiology and human movement sciences, I think she's qualified to, to uh, get his mo throwing motion more efficient, improve his pop time and really help him where he can at least be average defensively behind the plate. His, uh, he has been as advertised offensively. And so if he can keep that up and then just get to average defensively, he's going to be able to stick around for a while in New York. The one fun fact I have about Austin Wells is he was born on the day that I started at NBC, July 12th, 1999. So wow. I'll never, I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget his birthday. And that'll always be stuck in my head because that was the first day. It was a Monday and it was the first day I started at NBC. <laughs> Because I like looking up the kids, you know, well, I don't like it because, you know, it makes you realize how old you are. Yeah. And, um, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, I'm almost 25 years older than that kid. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm, so, yeah. I'm close to the point where some of these uh, some of these prospects could be my children. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the international signing period is on uh, Saturday. And if you want more about that, check out Friday's show of Locked on MLB Prospects. We're talking all about it. But some of those kids being, you know, 16 years old and whatnot, uh, they're at the point where they could be my children. And that's just a little bit, that's a hard fact to to kind of swallow is yeah, those could be my kids. Yeah. I'm almost at the point where I can be their grandmother. So, you know, it's... What are you going to do? <laughs> well, Lindsay, thank you for joining me on Locked on Yankees. You can find Lindsay at Crosby Baseball on Twitter and MLB Prospects, Locked on MLB Prospects. He's the new host of the show. And we're very excited to have you on the Locked on Network and wish you well with your show. Thank you for having me. Okay. I'm very excited about Rachel uh, being hired. It would help if I unmuted my microphone, yes. Um, so check out Locked On MLB Prospects. Lindsay and I are going to do a full crossover where we talk about the Yankees prospects because there are a bunch of good prospects that you all should know about, and Lindsay has all of the info for you. Is that the 411? I think that's the 411. So before we get into segment two, in which I am going to talk about the big news shaking up the Yankees broadcast booth because – I just, I still can't believe that any of this is happening. Um, it's the new year. We're 11 days into the new year. And that means New Year's resolutions. So if you haven't broken yours yet, here's some stuff for you to know. If your resolution is about getting fitter, eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. I'll say that, yes. Built Bar makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good you'll want to eat it, unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill. You want to eat healthy, but it gets so boring. By week three, you might be thinking, this is not worth it. Where's the chocolate? 
Built Bar is covered in 100% chocolate. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of fat. Candy Bars can be as high as 240 calories with 30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. Even if you're not a huge fan of working out, you can at least eat something that tastes good and is good for you. That way you enjoy a delicious Built Bar. You can almost count it as a workout. And there's so many good flavors to choose from. I tell you all the time, mint brownie. Get mint brownie. So go to built.com, use our promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, the promo code is LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Thanks again for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. So the big news, well, yeah, I guess it's big news. I would say so. I need a built bar. My stomach is growling and I need a built bar. I should go downstairs and grab one. David Cohn is going to Sunday Night Baseball. I'm excited about this. I'm not excited about the prospect of him not being on Yes as much, but I'm so excited that the national audience will get to listen to David Cohn on a regular basis. So the revamped Sunday Night Baseball booth is Carl Ravage, David Cohn, Eduardo Perez. Then... In the most shocking news ever, they're giving Alex Rodriguez kind of like his own Manning cast. So how Peyton and Eli were doing their separate broadcast for Monday Night Football. A-Rod will be doing his own broadcast for Sunday Night Baseball where it's a little more relaxed and he's not so stiff. And Michael K will be his co-host. That's shocking to me. If you told me even five years ago, that Michael Kay and Alex Rodriguez would be co-hosts of a program together on ESPN, I would have told you that you were insane. I can't believe it. And it should be interesting. I feel, because I've spoken about this before, if you've listened to me uh, on this show, I've discussed Alex Rodriguez. I've discussed his trajectory after he, well, actually, you know what? He started everything before he retired. He started on Fox doing pre and post game during the playoffs in 2015. Everyone loved him. He showed everyone that he was knowledgeable about baseball, that he was a baseball savant. You know, someone would say, oh, you hit a home run off this guy in 1997. He'd tell you what the pitch was, what the inning was, how the pitch broke across the plate and why he hit it so hard. It's just, it's amazing. And I feel like this format will be so much better for him. I feel like he got hamstrung by being in the booth. Not that he was ill-prepared. He may have been too prepared to be in the booth, if that makes sense. And I feel like having the kind of setting where he doesn't have to be forced to say something to fill airtime, and he can just react to what's happening without worrying about being the color guy or the play-by-play -play guy or the third guy in the booth. I think that'll be better for him. And I think working with Michael K will also be helpful for him. As for Cone, as I said, I am so excited that everyone across the country will be able to listen to David Cone talking about baseball, not bad mouthing baseball, and talking about stats. He's one of those rare older players, no offense, he's 11 years older than me, he hasn't played in a while. <laughs> And he doesn't badmouth the current state of baseball. There's stuff to complain about. There is. But there are some broadcasters who do it too much. John Smoltz. And David Cohn is not like that. He'll talk about the differences from when he played and what's going on now. But he doesn't trash the game. He just talks about how it's played, how the strategy is different, and then he will, he embraces stats and he talks about certain stats. So I think that booth with Ravage, Cone, and Eduardo Perez, I think that'll be really good. And I'm interested to see how the numbers are going to break down and how many people are actually going to tune in to the A-Rod Michael K broadcast. Um, some people 
might want to stay away from it. Some people still don't like A-Rod. And that's, I mean, it's understandable. And, you know, you like who you like. I don't like John Smoltz, so I usually refuse to watch Fox games. Or at least if I watch them, I mute them. We all have our people that we like. I am, because I love David Cohn so much, if you've listened to this show for a while, you know that he was on last April. And he's just the best. He's really nice. And he's as awesome as you can imagine. Actually, he's more awesome than you can imagine. Really, he's just, he's wonderful. And I'm so happy. This is so great. The only thing that's bad about this is now the Yes booth will have some openings because other than Cone probably cutting down his appearances from 100 games a season to only about 50, I think that's what Andrew Marchand said um, last night on Twitter, that Cone had said that that's probably what's going to happen. So he won't be in the S booth as much, which is understandable. He has to do prep work. He has to go to all the different places where there's Sunday night baseball, because contrary to popular belief, it's not always the Yankees and the Red Sox who play on Sunday night baseball. So it'll be interesting to see who the Yankees or, well, yeah, I guess Yankees, but who Yes puts into the booth. And that will be in our next segment. I don't know who's going in the booth. I have suggestions for who should be in the booth. But first, Bet Online has you covered with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Georgia beat Alabama last night. Is that who played? I don't pay attention to college football, but if you bet on Georgia, you probably won. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports so don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available bet online where the game starts so with kenny singleton retiring and david Cohn moving to sunday night baseball and michael k well i guess michael k he could still do stuff if it's a manning cast it's not like he has to go to the stadium to cover the game he can do it from wherever they're planning on doing it you know, they can do it the same way that Peyton and um, Eli were doing the Manning casts. They weren't always together, so that might work. But there are openings now in the S booth because Kenny Singleton's retiring, Cone's leaving, and who shall they put? I have some ideas. Ryan Rucco is a candidate for more Yankee booth appearances. And I think that maybe... I don't know if he'd want to do it, but I think maybe CC Sabathia could be a good addition to the Yes booth, although he has to be careful because, you know, when he's with Ryan doing the R2C2 podcast, he tends to curse a lot. And I know he's done some net games, and I know that he also, on MLB Network, they did an alternate broadcast with four different players, former players, and CeCe was one of them, and they sat around, watched the game, and, you know, he behaved himself. So I know he's capable of doing that. I also know, I don't remember if this was a rumor or if he actually said this, but he doesn't get along with Michael K. So the CeCe idea is for him to be with Ruko, not with Michael K. You also have John Flaherty. He might get more games. I was thinking last week, Cameron Mabin announced his retirement. And I think that could be a fun addition to the booth. I mean, why not? And then my final thought, Curtis Granderson. I said it when he played that he has such a soothing voice that he should be on TV doing baseball. And why not do it with the Yankees? I think that would be a great addition to the booth. Maybe they bring in Meredith Morakovitz sometimes instead of just doing sideline work because she could do baseball. Why not? She's covered it long enough. I think she could go into a booth and add some thoughts and do some color. Why not? She could be like Susan in the radio booth. And some people were suggesting Mark Teixeira. My thought about Mark Teixeira, if it's Mark Teixeira who did foul territory all those years ago on Yes, the goofy Mark Teixeira, Yes, 
If it's regular Mark Teixeira, mm, I don't know. I don't know. My leading candidates, Cece, Cameron Mabin, and Curtis Granderson. That's who I would like to see in the S booth. So let me know what you think about that and who, if you have any ideas for who else could be in the booth. Um, you know, they really only have two slots to fill. And, you know, Paul O'Neill is still stuck in Cincinnati and I don't see him traveling much, so he might not be doing as many games, but you never know. They might give him more games to do with the absence of Cone. But they usually do the games together, right? It's usually Kay, Cone, and O'Neill doing them together. So we'll see how that works. John Filippelli has um, an interesting task ahead of him. And speaking of interesting tasks, apparently, now let me just double check to make sure that I get this info right, because I only just saw the tweet before I started recording and I wanted to make sure that I got it. Okay, Jeff Passan, Major League Baseball and the MLB Players Association plan to hold a bargaining session Thursday, sauce, sauces, no, sources, tell ESPN. MLB is expected to make a core economics proposal at the session, which would be the first between the sides since the league locked out the players on December 2nd. So that's good because, sorry, last night, I saw a tweet by MLB Trade Rumors that said the two sides were going to meet within the next two weeks. People were kind of bitching and moaning and saying, why say that and actually do it closer? And hey, it's going to be Thursday. That's two days from now. So that's better than nothing, right? So yeah, um, I'm excited that the two sides will be meeting. Who knows how that's going to go, but at least something's happening Maybe they're finally thinking, okay, we're inching closer and closer to spring training. Maybe let's get something done here because we're only about, what, a month and a couple days away from pitchers and catching, uh, pitchers and catching, pitchers and catchers reporting. Although, do we even have dates for that with the lockout? I don't know. It's usually mid-February, usually around Valentine's Day. And wouldn't that be a lovely Valentine's Day present for all of us who love baseball, for baseball to actually come back and be on time and everything start on time and we won't have to worry about, you know, a delayed season, a shortened season. So let's all keep our fingers crossed that the league and the Players Association have better... <laughs> have a better bargaining session than all of the sessions that they had during 2020 when they were trying to come up with a schedule for the COVID shortened season, because that was kind of a mess for a while there. And, you know, my biggest fear is that we're going to have a repeat of that and that it'll cut into the season. And no, no one wants that. No one wants that. So let's review the episode. Rachel Balkovic. Good job, Yankees. Good job hiring someone who's very qualified to be a manager and not caring about the fact that it's a woman and actually embracing that fact. Anyone can manage baseball. If you have experience playing the sport or even softball, because they're very similar. It's like when people complain that guys who didn't play baseball are in the booth. No, not guys. When Jessica... Mendoza was in the ESPN booth and men were complaining, well, she didn't play baseball. It's like, well, did Vin Scully play baseball? Did Michael Kay play baseball? No. What's the difference? Okay. David Cohn, going to Sunday Night Baseball. I'm so excited about this. Michael Kay, A-Rod, working together on Sunday Night Baseball on an alternate broadcast. Who knew? Who could have imagined this happening ever? I'm excited. And here's my teaser for tomorrow's episode. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We're doing a Writer Wednesday feature. And Brian Hoke of MLB.com will be our guest. Abby will be on tomorrow. And Abby and I will be interviewing Brian about his book writing career. In case you didn't know, Brian Hoke has written a couple of books. And I believe he's writing a new one. So we're going to talk all about that. 
on tomorrow's episode of Locked On Yankees. But for now, that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, we're getting closer and closer to 1,000, so please hit that subscribe button. We would really appreciate it. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Bets. Now make your second listen, Locked On Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. So enjoy your Tuesday and we will join you tomorrow again with Brian Hoke and Abby.